Hello everybody, I'm back with another Genshin Impact Theory video, even though this time you may come up with more questions than answers. Just think about this video as food for thought. I've gathered your theories in the comments, my doubts, my questions to which I don't really have an answer to, and some curiosities I found and I decided to make a video out of them. Before we begin, as always, this is a theory video. Well, kinda. But still, what I'm going to say is based on information found in the game and in the manga, but my conclusions and my doubts do not represent the official lore. Anyway, let's start with the first topic. To receive an animal vision, you don't have to lose someone. Let me explain. People think, especially in the comment section, that grief is a necessary requirement to be granted an animal vision, since Kasua, Shao and Heizo lost their friends. The first problem about this theory is that Kazuha received this vision before Tomo challenged the Raiden Shogun, and Shao already had this vision before he was taken in by Rex Lapis, or at least he didn't receive it after the other Yakshas died. Then we have Jean, who really hasn't lost anybody. Sucrose was abandoned by her friends, so she didn't really grieve someone's death, and Sayu Sensei just left so she could grow further. So, yeah, not every animal user has actually really lost someone and has grieved for it. But let's pretend that grief is actually the requirement. Why is Rosaria Cryo then? Her village, friends and family have all been killed by the bandits who kidnapped her and raised her as a cold-blooded murderer. It is more than safe to say that she has grieved and suffered for the loss of someone she cared for, but she didn't receive an animal vision. Then we have Yelan, who lost her teammates in a mission and, being the only survivor, she thinks it was her fault because she was too overconfident, yet she received an Hydra vision, not an animal one. We could also include Kaya and Diluc, but Kaya was abandoned, which now that I think about it is kinda similar to Sayu's story, and Diluc received this vision way before Krepus died because of its illusion. We should also consider the fact that Tvat is an extremely dangerous place. People lose their loved ones very easily. I mean, they just need to step outside the city and you'll find hillagers of all kinds of dimensions, slimes, whopper flowers, fatui, treasure horrors, reef walls, room machines, scorpions, vultures, ermites. I mean, the list goes on and they can just appear out of nowhere. So yeah, losing someone is very easy in Tvat and everybody would have an animal vision if that was the requirement. Talking about visions, specifically Dendro ones, we have a few people in Sumeru who are Dendro users. Baiju in Liwe, a known people in Nazuma that we saw during the Omnipresence of Mortal Archon quest. But what about Mondstadt? As far as I know, we have no reference of anybody wielding a Dendro vision. I wonder, is Varka going to be Dendro? They just introduced a new character from Mondstadt, Mika, and his Cryo, so I still wonder why they're not introducing any Dendro user. Also, why does Dendro seem like it's a rare element to have? Even in Sumeru we just know about 3 Dendro characters in total, Tainari, Kolei and Ahaitham, and they're introducing new characters but none of them are Dendro. Weird. Anyway, next topic is the Tsaritsa being the god of love while I think she is the god of peace. I received a lot of comments in which people corrected me saying that she is the god of love, but the truth is that there's no actual proof about it. The concept of god of love comes from what Dainslev says in the Travail video. She is a god with no love left for her people, nor do they have any left for her. This doesn't really mean much, honestly. Let's think about it. Everything Venti, Rex Lapis, Makoto and A, Ruka Devata and Kusanali have done and are still doing is for the protection and well-being of their people. They all clearly love their own people, but this doesn't make them gods of love. The fact that the Tsaritsa doesn't love her people anymore just explains her copy mechanism since she lost a loved one in the Cataclysm, which is a pretty common thing. If I don't love anybody, I can suffer for the loss because I didn't care about them in the first place. Not the healthiest thought process, but still very common. I, on the other hand, think that she is the god of peace because... Absolute peace. Such is the gift from the Tsaritsa, such is her majesty's benevolence. Piero makes it really clear what her gift and benevolence are, which feels a lot like he's talking about her ideals. This could also be a very interesting storyline since we would have a god of peace who is leading a war. Of course, she could end up being the god of something different altogether, but still between Denslev's love and Piero's peace, I feel Piero is more credible. 
about the travail video, I have a theory that is based on literally nothing but a single detail shown in the video. Each nation has a numbered act, except for Mondstadt, which is the prologue, right? Why is Kanria's act number hidden then? This should mean that it's not going to be act 7. My theory is that it's going to be act 0, meaning that we will go back in time, probably with the power of the 7 noses combined, and we will experience the fall of Kanria or try to avoid it in the first place. Again, this is the theory based on nothing, but it's been in my head for a long time now. Back to the Tsaritsa, I don't think she lost her lover, because, like I said, we have Signora. Rosalind was in love with Rostam, who died in the Cataclysm. When she found out, she just lost it, used her knowledge and magic to become an actual beast, she lost her physical body and turned into the Crimson Witch of Flames, and she also turned against the gods, specifically against Venti, who she believes to be guilty for Rostam's death. Now, if the Tsaritsa lost her lover as well, that would be the same exact story, and I really don't think the writers are that lazy or incapable of creating a new and unique story for her. That's why I think she either lost a parent or, and this is what I believe, her son or daughter, who was the previous Cryo Archon. She lost the person she loved the most, and you can love anyone more than your own kid, hence now she doesn't want to love anybody anymore, so she decided to force her ideal of peace through war, or better yet, by removing what caused such suffering in the first place, that is Celestia. One last quick thing about the Tsaritsa, in my Arkans video I guess her Arkan name to be Flauros, but I was told in the comment section that this name had already been used since Savria is an alternate name for the same demon. Since the name Havria is very different and doesn't remotely recall the name Flauros, I guess my idea could still stand. I wonder why they gave the God of Salt an alternate name rather than the official one, especially considering how this demon doesn't have anything to do with Salt or the story in general. I mean, Havria in the game didn't even want to fight, while Havria slash Flauros is usually summoned to exact revenge. Next topic is not much of a theory, but rather a curiosity about Enkanomiya. We all know how Enkanomiya's time is very weird and it doesn't make sense at all since it lasted 200 years at most inside Enkanomiya while eons went by on the surface of Tevat. To this craziness, let's add what the book In the Light Beneath the Shadow of the Byakuyakoku collection says. The question 6 talks about time and how they define the year. The question asks who is the father of 12 children, each having 60 daughters, of which 30 are pale and 30 are dark, and the answer is a year. There used to be a sequel to this riddle in which the 60 daughters each had 12 kids, each of these kids had 60 children, each of these children has 60 more, and so on. Let's write down how a normal year works. A year has 12 months, each month has roughly 30 days, each day 24 hours, each hour 60 minutes, and each minute 60 seconds. In Economia, on the other hand, a year, the father, had 12 months, his children, but each month had 60 days, the daughters. 30 were pale, the white knight, and 30 were dark, the ever knight. Each day has 12 hours, each hour 60 minutes and each minute 60 seconds. So although the result is still the same, a year still lasts a year, it is interesting to see that they consider day and night as two different days rather than a whole cycle. This was a really nice little detail that they added. Also, still about Enkanomiya, if you've ever asked yourself why the scribe who wrote Before Sun and Moon calls himself the scribe of Tokoyo Okami when he wasn't supposed to know the Narukami language style back then since the people of Enkanomiya learned it thanks to Orobashi, well, you're not alone. Next topic is something that doesn't make sense to me. What happens when a vision holder doesn't have his vision? In Inazuma, we've seen that people completely lost their ambition and sometimes they went crazy once their vision was taken from them because of the Vision Hunt decree. But then, why was Arataki Ito just okay after he lost his vision? We can see him pretty normal, as much as normal goes for him, in this video. Why wasn't he affected? We also have another huge example of a person who was completely fine without his vision. Diluc. After his father died, he resigned from the Knights of Avonius, discarded his vision, and left for more than three years, but he never lost his ambition. If anything, it grew up even more. So yeah, I don't really know what to think. Talking about visions, the next topic revolves around the Arkham War and vision holders. 
So this is just my theory and there is no actual proof for it, but I don't think people had visions during the Archon War and they probably didn't have them a thousand years ago when Vanessa was alive because Venti wasn't wearing his fake vision in the manga, even though he wears it in the cover of the prologue. Also, considering how the inlays share some designs of the gods who won the Archon War, visions couldn't have been given before the Seven Seeds were established anyway. Here's the thing, vision holders are allergens, that is, people who can become gods. Why are people given the chance now to become gods if Celestia caused a war to leave only seven main gods to rule over Tavat? What are your theories about it? Let me know in the comments. Also, still talking about visions, I just found out that there are three chapters of the manga that haven't been translated in English. In chapter 15, conclusion, Amber fights against Barnabas to defend Kole and something really strange happens to her vision. When Kole wished to protect others and managed to reach Amber, her vision turned into this. Instead of the pyro symbol, there's this 10-pointed star with an intertwined triangle. The only possible explanation I can think about is that this symbol is the element of the god the Fatui imbued Kole with. We know that she has the remains of a god or its hatred in her, especially because Sino performed the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram on her. This ritual was used by the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a late 19th and early 20th century secret society that dealt with the occult and paranormal activities. This ritual was and is still used to remove chaotic and impure elements from the magician's circle. Back to Genshin Impact, what Saino says is written with the Latin alphabet of the game, but for once, there's no need to translate it because it's actually just plain English. Saino says YHVH, ADNI, AHIH, AGLA, which are the cardinal points and names associated with God. Then, above my head, the presence of God. Anyway, I could find only two references of a 10-pointed star, which in the end have the same meaning. Balance. One reference says that the symbol is composed of two five-pointed stars, one upright signifying the triumph of spirit of a matter, and one upside down signifying the triumph of matter of a spirit. By joining them together, everything balances out. The other reference has to do with the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. The points represent the Sephiroth, emanations of God. Once again, two opposing five-pointed stars with opposing meanings joined together to create balance. My last topic has to do with Sumeru and I will talk about the ending of the first Archon Quest, so if for whatever reason you haven't finished it yet, this is going to be a spoiler. Let's talk about the, world forget the fact that the world and forget me almost overlap makes me think that whoever this person is said something more. I think we heard parts of the full sentence. Grammatically, the possible full sentence may be the word must or should forget me, or the opposite, the word mustn't or shouldn't forget me. Obviously, the sentence could be longer than that, like I hope that the word will never forget me, but that seems really off. Now, I just said whoever this person is, because at this point, I'm not sure that it's Ruka Devata. It may very well be the Lord of Flowers, Rukadevata and Alakmar's silly friend who decided to die so that her spectacular death would make her eternally remembered. Considering how bad things went after her death, the long-lasting friendship destroyed, Alakmar went crazy and was punished by the gods together with his people, Rukadevata left and built her own forest, would it be so strange that she's now full of regrets? There are also two more reasons why I'm considering the Lord of Flower rather than Rukadevata. The same sentence was told by an Eremite World, forget me. who follow Alakmar, and the Lord of Flower was both Rukadevata and the Scarlet King's friend. I also built a whole theory behind Kusanali disappearing and the city disappearing in the 3.0 trailer, thinking that Kusanali was losing her powers and Sumeru was about to be destroyed, instead they just mixed different scenes and it was just a samsara ending. So now I've learned my lesson and I'm doubting everything I see. Hence it would be too easy for that voice to be Ruka Devata. To be fair, it could also just be Ruka Devata saying something like Come on, I'm dead, forget about me and move on. You have a new god, don't ignore her like you're doing. And that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was different from what I've done up until now. I'm waiting for version 3.2 to finally be released to make a Sumeru Complete Theory video, because I think we will get so much information from that, especially since Ermansol is going to be at the center of Sumeru's Archon Quests. 
In the meantime, I really don't have much to do in the game anymore, to be honest. I mean, I reached 100% exploration progress for every single region available in Tvat, so yeah, I really can't wait for version 3.2 to be released. This is also the reason why I haven't streamed yet, because there really is nothing to do in the game except for the daily quests and the current event, so nothing really entertaining. As always, if you liked the video, leave a thumbs up, and if you want to watch more Genshin Impact Theory videos, subscribe. I'll see you in the comment section, and until next time, over and out.